Hey everyone, welcome back to another Mortal Kombat 11 tutorial video. In the second episode of my character focused tutorials slash series, we are going to be looking at one of my personal favorite characters and one of the most fun characters to play, in my opinion, in this game. That character, of course, is Shao Kahn. The current, well, is he? No, he's not the current Emperor of Outworld. Former Emperor of Outworld. He's actually finally back, he's finally playable, uh, I've actually not had, damn that misses, not had uh, an MK game in my kind of MK time frame where Shao Kahn has been playable. He was of course absent from MKX, but now he's back, you know, he's kind of this like weird uh, pre-order slash DLC character. So yeah, it seems like whenever people talk about Shao Kahn, there's only one thing in focus usually, and that is how terrible he is. And you know what? I kind of agree and disagree with that notion. Does Shao Kahn have very apparent and very noticeable flaws? Of course. Is it impossible to win with him? Absolutely not. This character has quite a bit going for him, which I will be attempting to showcase. Listen, this game is fairly balanced, no matter what people say. Uh, and in a balanced game like this, where the tiers can be considered fairly close to each other, there's no character that is 100% unviable, there's really no reason not to play a character if you think that character might be fun. I think Shao Kahn is fun, so I play him. Do I lose with him more? Of course. It's going to be a lot more difficult, no doubt, to win with a character like this versus a character like Scorpion. There's just no getting around it. However, can you still kick ass with him? Of course. So let's take a look at how. So Shao Kahn is kind of a weird archetype. I think that's why not many people play him. Actually, I see very few Shao Kahns. He is a huge character. He's one of the biggest characters uh, in terms of character model. I think only Kotal Kahn matches his size. But surprisingly, he is fairly fast, has some good pokes, and is actually more focused on like whiff punishing and spacing out his opponent rather than you know you would think these characters this type of character would be focused on like big heavy buttons big fl plus frames and all that he doesn't really have that he really is all about like punishing and getting some good jump ins using his range because let me tell you this character does have range so let's take a look at some of his best pokes starting with down four this down 4 is godlike, like Johnny Cage levels of annoying this poke. As you can see, it covers a massive, massive range. Like, holy shit, that is awesome. You can almost hit with it uh, right at the start of a match. You only have to move a little bit forward. Kind of like Scorpions or Sub-Zeros. If you look at the frame data on it, down 4 is only negative 8. When you think about how far you can space this out, that's pretty good. The final advantage of this poke is that, as you can see, Shao Kahn almost goes completely prone while doing this move, and he can actually low profile a lot of shit. This is a very, very disrespectful move. Like, if you, your opponent doesn't have a good low or a good mid, this is gonna go under so much stuff. It's actually kind of annoying. That's one thing he has definitely going for him. The second poke worth mentioning is his sweep, back four. This sweep is godlike. It's actually, I would say, one of Shao Kahn's best low pokes. Uh, look at the distance on this. His sweep covers a huge distance. Very, very good to just throw this out because most people, well, they are going to be blocking low because Shao Kahn does not have a threatening overhead. But the reason you can throw this out is because it's negative to unblock. It's very, very, very safe. So really, you can just get away with like spamming this move very frequently because there's not much your opponent can do with it. Uh, of course, you cannot follow up. It's not plus. But is it like a good disrespectful poke? Of course it is. Other pokes worth mentioning, Shao Kahn's down 2. This is like Jade levels of down 2. Uh, his down 2 covers a massive range. It has actually a huge hitbox on it. Uh, well, I said Jade level, maybe not as good as Jade's, uh, somewhere between Baraka's and Jade's, about on the same level as Baraka's. So, if you're having trouble anti-airing, Shao Kahn is a good pick because his anti-air is godlike. You'll be getting a lot of people with this down too. Finally, last poke of note worth mentioning before we get into the strings, 
is Shao Kahn's jumping too. This is a godlike jump too. Look at the distance it covers. You know, I said that Shao Kahn does not have a real threatening overhead and that still holds true. However, this, this jumping move has a lot of things going for it. Like, just, just look at it. Just look at the distance. And of course, it goes into a full combo, which we'll get into later. We'll get into his combos. Don't worry. Uh, hop attacks. Maybe it's worth just kind of as a bonus uh, mentioning this overhead. Yeah, this is also a decent overhead. Uh, just think about the fact that Shao Kahn does not have an overhead kind of starting move. He does have it in strings, but not as a starter. All right, speaking of strings, let's get into Shao Kahn's main strings, starting with one of his best punishes. This is one, two, uh, one plus three. The thing of note with this is that this move actually deals quite a bit more damage than many of the like one, one, two or one, one, one strings that other characters have because it ends in this long animation. It actually builds up quite a good chunk of damage. Now, of course, this is not Shao Kahn's best punish. His best punish is to go for a combo. Uh, but his standing one is his fastest move. He also has another version of it, uh, standing one four, which actually ends in an overhead. This overhead does have a gap. You can see he kind of does like a little move forward. So again, it does have a gap. Don't know how interruptible it is, but as you can see, he does have an overhead. As I mentioned, mainly in his strings. So yeah, keep these two moves in mind. And when we'll get into his combos, I'll show you some good, like, punish stuff to do. This also leads into a crushing blow. The requirement for it is kind of weird. You have to hit three of these projectiles, which we'll get into later. Another weakness of Shao Kahn, aside from the ones we mentioned, is that he has some incredibly difficult to get crushing blow requirements. Seriously, he needs like setup moves, like to hit with certain moves a number of times. You know, when you compare him to a character like Gyrus, who can get a counter with his sand trap and deal like 330 damage, yeah, it's just a lot of his crushing blows aren't worth it. Uh, this one is probably his best because this is his main projectile. You're likely gonna be hit hitting your opponent with three of it throughout the match and then in the end you can go for something like this. This is great to close out a round. Alright, other strings worth mentioning is 2-1-2. This is Shao Kahn's main combo ender, the 2-1 version of 2-1-2. Yeah, you can go for something like this easily. I'm just doing a simple combo. You can go for more damage because you can actually link another 2-1-2. Also low, but it does start off of a high. I don't know if I mentioned this. If I didn't, I'll mention it again or I'll mention it for the first time. The other main problem of Shao Kahn is that he lacks good mids, especially as combo starters. This is a high, this is a high, this is a high, high. He has a lot of highs, just like Kotal Khan. Again, I think I mentioned this in my Kotal Khan video. It's kind of interesting that both the Khans suffer from kind of the same weaknesses. This means that Shao Kahn is just very prone to being disrespected. People who, you know, spam low pokes, who spam down twos, uh, do all that. They're going to be hitting you quite a bit. So you have to be very careful with him. There's a couple of other combo strings. Uh, this one is nothing special. This one is worth mentioning, the 4-2-1-2, this string is actually very, very safe, so, no, actually it's not, oh yeah, this, this part is safe, my bad, yeah, this, this part of the string is very safe, it's also a good punish, uh, leads into the main bread and butter combo, the nice thing about this move is that it has massive range, like, look at the range, the disadvantage of it is that it's very slow on startup, and it's absolutely death on whiff. So with this move, your opponent can pretty much jump over you, or if they're already in the air and you whiff, uh, they get a full combo punish. There's just no getting around with it. This one also goes into an overhead. Uh, I don't tend to use this overhead. I prefer this one. 
they both started off of highs unless I know that I can like really solidly space the opponent out but even then I would rather go you know for a combo uh, even if I don't have meter so yeah this overhead very risky very risky and finally his final string his 434 grab this is a good string mainly because it starts off of this move this unfortunately as bad as it looks is by far Shao Kahn's best mid. This little little kick he does, yeah. The thing about this move is that you can go into the string, which actually switches sides, not bad, but this move on its own can be cancelled into special moves. And the nice thing about this move is that you can late cancel it. Let me just try and show it, yeah. So you don't have to immediately go into the special move, you have a bit of leeway. For this reason, people say that this move is actually hit confirmable. Now, whether that's true or not, I don't know, I doubt it. Like, top players say it is, but it is incredibly difficult. Pretty much online, I would say it's nearly impossible to uh, hit confirm this move. Offline, it might be completely possible, I don't know. But, technically, this move is hit confirmable, so yeah, just keep that in mind. The reason I say that is because this is, all, well, almost safe. This move, negative seven, very close to being safe. His main launcher, and we'll get into his special moves in just a bit, is incredibly unsafe. So yeah, that's why hit confirming this is ideal, but it is extremely difficult to do. All right, I think we've covered all the strings. Oh wait, I should talk about the final one. This one, four, four, this is plus six on block. Uh, does have a gap in it, but in the corner you can like catch people off guard with it. Keep this string in mind. Is it like very good? No, but I have managed to get people with it. Because again, it's very plus. He also has another move that's very plus. This little run kick. This is also decent. Good mid. Uh, also plus six. So you can go into something like this and do a grab, you know. You know how it is. Alright, special moves. We already looked at the spear. Main projectile for Shao Kahn, available in every variation. The thing that's nice about this spear is that if I record Noob doing something like this, we can go full screen. Even though the spear has slow startup, it actually has a stunning effect on it. As you can see, you cannot trade too much with a character like Noob Saibot, but if you do manage to get a successful trade, you can pretty much get three dashes in before your opponent can jump. So this projectile really does serve only one purpose. If you're getting zoned out, which Shao Kahn is vulnerable to being zoned out, you hit your opponent with the spear and you immediately start going in. Like, don't try to like zone with this. You get a hit, start moving in. This variation, okay, just checking. This variation also has another projectile. Uh, it's this move. Pretty much the same concept. Uh, the two variations of Shao Kahn, unlike Scorpion, are not made equal. This variation, uh, which, fuck, I don't know what the tournament version is called. Uh, the one with this hammer move and this low, the first variation, the first tournament variation, is by far the inferior one. This projectile doesn't add anything. It's not any faster on startup. It, do, it just serves no purpose uh, when Shao Kahn is not meant to be throwing projectiles. Like, as you can see, this is slow as well. Uh, they're both mids. The only difference is that this, very close, tends to uh, go over some of the like smaller characters, especially if they're ducking, whereas this is an actual mid. But honestly, I would not recommend picking this variation, but I'm going over it anyways. Uh, I talked about projectiles here, so I skipped this move. Uh, Shao Kahn has an air grab. So if we go and set our opponent to, to jump, you'll see. There's a little slam. Unblockable, bam. Sl slams him into the ground. Can be amplified for 170 damage. Honestly, I would say the down two, because Shao Kahn has such a good down two, is preferable. You can use this as a combo ender. Uh, I'll try showing it. 
Might take a while because I don't use this combo. It switches sides, so if you're, you know, wanting to switch sides with your opponent, this is one of your options to end the combo with this. Okay, shoulder charge. This is the important one. Shao Kahn's shoulder charge is his main combo starter. Just like Johnny Cage's glow kick, this actually works very well as a whiff punishing tool from range. Like your opponent does an unsafe projectile or something, bam, just shoulder charge him. But make sure to do it when you're absolutely sure it's gonna hit because shoulder charge is negative 20 on block. Sure, it leads to a launcher, but negative 20 is negative 20. It's one of the easiest punishes in the game. Now, interestingly, this move has two amplifications, two versions. Both are deathly unsafe. However, this one does end in an overhead. So, listen, have I caught people with this? Yes. Do I recommend using it a lot? No. Uh, people tend to forget about this move, though. I will say that. Uh, even like Shao Kahn's who are better than me tend to not use this. Uh, one advantage it does have is that it leaves the opponent incredibly close. So you can go for a grab. You can pretty much do anything. I mean, look at how close this move leaves the opponent. Pretty much right in their face. Now, another variation specific move, the ground shatter. This is a low. So technically this variation has mix ups because this move can end in an overhead or it can end in a low. It doesn't deal a lot of damage, but hey, it's there, in a, there as an option, so yeah. Weirdly, this move leaves the opponent very far, so you don't really want to be this distance with Shao Kahn, honestly. So yeah, it's there. This mix-up is reactable because the overhead has that little kind of lead-up run to it, so yeah, it is, it is reactable. Shao Kahn also has his hammer lunge overhead move. Kind of good to get in. I mean, you can cover the whole screen with it. Just keep in mind one thing. Another inherent weakness of this character is that Shao Kahn has a massive hitbox. So normally, things like jumping over projectiles works with a lot of characters. It doesn't really work with him. Because he's so huge, his little feet tend to be clipped by most projectiles in the game. So keep that in mind. You have to be really careful with him and advance slowly by ducking rather than jumping over projectiles because he just simply cannot uh, or you have to time it a lot more specifically with him. All right, now we arrive at the final variation specific move. It's his ridicule, his debuff. He says you suck. He does his Shao Kahn laugh and this move is absolutely terrible. I mean, okay, the idea behind it is good. What it does is it debuffs the enemy. So if I go and... Fuck, how am I going to set this up? We'll wait a little bit with Noob and throw a projectile. So as you know, Noob's projectile does 9% damage. Here, it does 45 damage. So the damage drop is actually significant. Now why do I say that this move still sucks? This move sucks because... It is almost impossible, if, like unless your opponent is sleeping, to set this move up. So normally how you would set up a buff or a debuff is you would cut your combo short, one of the safer ways to do this, and then do your little debuff. This can be done with like Baraka's flag, Scorpion's buff and all that, but because this animation takes so goddamn long, every opponent has time to stand up and punish almost every so really some of your only options are to like you know really catch your opponent sleeping but listen you're at any distance from a character like this like noob cybot bam he can teleport and he can punish ridicule from anywhere so honestly i've played around with this variation i grinded with it but i've never once managed to set up or find a good setup for rid ridicule it does lead to a crushing blow though Ah, uh, fuck with. I think with one of his strengths. This one, yeah. Triggers if opponent is de debuffed by ridicule or humiliate. It's the same move, really. But yeah, you do this. Again, such a finicky crushing blow requirement. I mean, good damage. No, no one's gonna deny that that's not good damage, but... Is it gonna happen in a real match, especially if your opponent is good? Unlikely. Alright, let's take a look at variation number two for Shao Kahn. 
again, I don't remember the tournament variation name for it, but this is the hammer version, <laughs> let's just say that, and this is by far the better version of Shao Kahn. He gains a couple of new moves, one of them is this up hammer toss. This move, let me tell you, is a massive noob killer. Uh, not noob cybot, but people who don't know how to fight this character. This hammer move can be directed close or mid. As you can see, it goes up and then slams down. It's a combo ender, it's nothing special, but actually... Oh, did I not set it? I didn't set it. There we go. But in situations where your opponent is blocking, this type of setup is very effective. Again, if your opponent doesn't know what the hell is going on, this is not a real thing. However, the hammer drop is going to lead to enough plus frames, in theory, to keep the pressure going. Now, the reason I say in theory is because this actually has a very, very easy counter to it. I'm gonna have to switch over to Noob Saibond. And if we go to record Shao Kahn doing something like this, actually, I should... Nah, it's gonna work. I screwed up. Yeah, this is why. Let me record the close one, actually. Yeah, there we go. This is why. The reason this doesn't work is because... There's a gap, I think. Maybe not Noob Cyborg, but Scorpion. Scorpion can get a teleport. Yeah, so here, if you're getting hit by this, just go for a down two. Uh, it's going to hit Shao Kahn every single time. There's nothing he can do about it. And down two is deal 14% in this game. So he's always going to be losing. He's always going to be losing. But do a lot of people get caught by this? Of course. Even people who know what the trick is, sort of, can sometimes be caught off by this little hammer move. So, it's good. The other thing he has for him, in this variation, is a better combo ender. This move, as brutal as it looks, deals almost no damage. And you can even amplify it. However, it is by far Shao Kahn's best combo ender. So, if we, you know, we talked earlier about punishing combos. You go for something like this. You know, 27%, 277. That is decent damage, you know. For a punish. You can also go for something like this. Which would be Shao Kahn's like bread and butter combo. Yeah, decent. Okay, damage. This is not a really high deal, high damage dealing character. This move is also very fast on startup, so this kind of trickery, down one into this move, yeah, it works. Believe me, it works. Uh, you know, with a character like this who doesn't have a lot of dirt going for him, you gotta use everything you can, and shit like this, you know, going for this uh, little hammer grab move, which is not actually a grab, it can get people and catch them off guard, because it's very difficult to escape. The hitbox is, like, surprisingly large. Yeah. The last thing this variation has going for him is this hammer buff. This amplifies the damage of any move that uses the hammer. You can see not by much, by about 10%, but hey, 10% is 10%. The reason overall I say that this variation is far superior is because this buff is way easier to set up than the other one. Are you still punishable? Yes, but the punish is way more difficult. So, yeah, this hammer buff is actually usable in a real match, and it leads to some good damage. It does, because it probably leads to uh, one of the easier Shao Kran crushing blows to trigger, and it's this one. So the requirement for this is for the hammer buff to be active when you hit with this move, and it does lead to pretty significant crushing blow so there you go 
that's probably one of the best crushing blows he has going for him. So overall, this character is an interesting mixed bag. Is he as bad as people say? I don't know. I don't think he is. I think Shao Kahn does have a couple of uh, solid points going for him. His frame data is good. His pokes are good. Uh, he has decent damage, good corner traps, plus frames. So technically he has that going for him. However, one of his variations is terrible. He is very prone to being zoned out because of his huge hitbox. And really, in terms of not frame data, but in terms of move, you know, usability, he cannot compete with some of the better characters. No solid mids, no solid, like, abusable poke, aside from this. I'm talking abusable poke that actually leaves your opponent standing. He lacks all of that, so he does suffer. Again, one of the worst things that can happen to a Shao Kahn player is meeting a down-to happy person, because... God, it's just impossible because everything starts off of a high. Weirdly, I think Shao Kahn suffers from the same problems but needs the exact same buff that Kotal Kahn would need and that is to adjust the first variation a little bit and the other thing would be to just give them one more solid mid. I'm not saying that this should be a mid, that would be ridiculous but come on, just, just give him one more mid, maybe a new move maybe make a string from this because this is actually a decent mid the problem with it is that it leads to nothing it's just this move on its own so maybe you know have a string that starts with this and ends with like this i don't know but this this character could be made so much better with one decent mid still again it's perfectly possible to win with him online people get caught by the tricks more uh even people who don't who know what you're doing are gonna have trouble because you know you can do quite a bit just be careful with this shoulder charge that's my you know that's the life lesson for today all right i'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this guide for shao Kahn here let me know what you guys think of this character uh, do you think he needs buffs do you think he's okay as he is just let me know thanks for watching guys hope you enjoyed this video and peace out